Hi, my name's Lexi. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today's video is going to be an overhead shot video of me setting up my 2022 planner, tracker, journal, all-in-one sort of thing, and I'm really excited about it. But first, I just wanted to take a minute to introduce the exact planner that I'm using and talk about it for a short period of time. So this is the box that my planner comes in, and I'll be opening it up and showing it to you guys in a second. It's made by another YouTuber whose channel name is Jordan Shrinks. She is a weight loss channel, and there are aspects of this planner that are a little bit focused on weight loss. I'm not going to be using those portions of it, and I am going to be focused on some things that are like health and sort of like self-care focused, but I want to assure you guys, I know that the idea of wellness or self-care can oftentimes be like really toxic when it's used as a euphemism for losing weight and things like that. I don't feel that Jordan is in that toxic arena, but um, she has a weight loss channel, so I know that there are a lot of others who don't agree with me on that, and that's fine. But I want to assure you guys that I got this journal because I think it's stunning, um, and I need something to help keep me organized and help me with habit tracking, and a lot of the other ones I could find were really plain, and this is just to die for. So, um, in my mind, there are a few different types of planners, journals. There's ones that are just straight up utilitarian, and these are like day, month, week, that's it. Then there's uh, ones that are really more artistic, they're meant to be more journals, and I think a lot of people kind of like make their own. My cousin makes gorgeous, gorgeous weekly planners, monthly planners, and she does them all by hand. I'll put a picture on the screen. She said I could post pictures, but a lot of people do those things and they get a lot of benefit from the artwork itself, doing the artwork itself. I myself have had goals of doing that and then it turned out that um, the pressure of having to like make this perfect art in my journal where I couldn't like erase it or it kept me from actually using my journal. So I wanted something that was beautiful but I don't have the artistic time or talent to do it myself. So that is why I bought this because honestly, it's the most beautiful journal I've ever seen. It has some habit tracking that I'm really interested in doing and it also has a really nice layout for uh, months and weeks. The reason I wanted to get a planner this year is that I'm really terrible about getting things done, getting things accomplished. I often feel kind of overwhelmed when I have like a lot of things to do that may seem like one task for a lot of people, but when you break it down, it's actually like a hundred different tasks and it just gets overwhelming to me. Also, my YouTube content sucks because I cannot, you guys, it is really hard for me to be able to like schedule doing a video. I started this YouTube channel because there were so many people that I really thought were awesome making YouTube videos and I wanted to get in on that fun, but doing content that is more fashion focused and a bit more vloggy, I can't just sit down and film a video. There's a lot of, at the very least, B-roll and maybe like C-roll or D-roll as, I don't, I don't know if that's how it's called, but you guys know what I mean. When you're talking about clothing, when you're talking about vlogs, there's You'll have to do multiple filming sessions for one video, and because I'm not very organized, that just falls by the wayside. Also, I just suck at the technical aspect. I actually had videos the filmed for the last edges. two weeks, and then Gosh, they, such the, precision the, the technical part going. of it is what prevented me from being able to post it. It's not great, and I have so many goals and things and ideas that I want to do, and then I'm failing at the execution. So I thought that having a planner this year would help me out. I thought that it would schedule, um, help me with tracking my goals and my habits that I want to improve upon, and also just for a schedule. So let's get to it. Okay, guys, well, here she is in all her glory. I'm really excited. You guys, look at this box. The box, okay, I know you can't judge a product by the box it comes in, but like, so aesthetic, so nice. Um, this is one of three designs this journal came in, or planner, whatever you want to call it. This is like the tattoo design, and look at that. Look at that. Oh, I love these metal edges. I love the gold in the ring. I love this design. Uh, but this was my favorite. I obviously, obvi obviously, I have a lot of tattoos, so I'm drawn to that. But I, I just love the um, the white and gold and black. I just love the coloring. So, let's start filling this out. This planner belongs to. Lexi, LaDonna, 
that's me and I'm really excited about that. Like, look at that, that's so good. <laughs> okay, so here we go, Start starting off and I think really positively, three people who inspire me and three things that inspire me. Unfortunately, you guys, I have to pause here for a second and say that instead of giving you an overview of the whole planner, I got excited and I immediately started filling it in. So I'm going to kind of like skip ahead past that and get to the part where I remember that I have a whole planner to show you. And so you'll see a little bit of it's already filled in and I'm going to show you the whole rest of the planner and then go back and start showing you how I started filling it out. Oops. I guess before we go any further, I should talk about the the layout of the planner as a whole. So right now we've got these inspirations that we're working on and I have two more sections. I feel most inspired when and I feel most fulfilled when. But then there's aspirations, three things I want to achieve by the end of the year, my plan of action and my expected challenges. And then there's a manifestation space. There's quite a few spaces like this in the calendar which are really cool. They're either manifestation spaces or just it says like creative space, do what you want. And I like that. I don't know, I, I sometimes I feel pressured in spaces like this that I have to draw something that's so cool that's going to match the planner but it, it's okay I'm just going to remind myself it's okay to just doodle there or whatever then I've got some goals I've got mental health goals three mental health goals for the year three things that are holding me back actions I need to move forward three healthy coping mechanisms I can use when feeling anxious I do get anxious all the time I think everybody does that's not to minimize people with like actual diagnosed anxiety but I think that everybody feels anxious to some extent and just because you don't have it severe enough to be a condition that warrants uh, medical help or treatment it doesn't mean that you can't learn to work through it positively. So I think that this is really good. And then we've got the section about self-love goals. And this is so amazing. Three things I love about myself and then three things I love about my life, which is kind of different and I like that because you can love yourself but not necessarily love your life. Or you can love the life that you're living but not necessarily feel positively about yourself. I like that these are separated out like that because we are not the same thing as the life that we are living. And then two things that I've done that I'm proud of one bad habit I want to break and one good habit I want to form. And then here we go with our vision board. I have, I'm not gonna lie, I have no idea what I'm gonna put here. And then here we go as another space to map your vision. I think what I want to do is turn this into a collage. Okay, so now we have the whole layout for the whole year like this, which is really kind of handy. And then 2021 in review, something that made me proud, something I can work on a lesson learned, and something I am grateful for. January goals, and then this is the best part. This is the habit tracker for the month of January. So I know um, I'm gonna kinda start to fill this out right away, and this is, so jumping ahead, they're already, I, I will say they're, we're gonna talk about this in a second, but they're already spots for hydration, so I'm not gonna put drinking enough water here, uh, because I like the way that this is more finely tuned. This shows you exactly how much water you drink, not just like a yes or no. But I also have a problem with getting enough sleep. So I'm gonna put here um, sleep greater than six hours. And I also have a problem with eating proper nutrition. and. My goal for the whole year is going to be much longer and much more, but I want to take uh, my vitamins every day, and I also want to eat an apple every day. I know that's kind of trite. It says, like, apple a day keeps the doctor away, but um, when I have in the past done kind of experiments with that, with eating an apple midday every day, I felt so much better. And I, I don't think it's the fiber, guys. I just don't think I get enough fiber regularly. But an apple's an easy way. Instead of being like, I will have X number of fiber intakes, just saying, eat an apple, just go to the store, buy apples, was super easy for me and super achievable. So I'm gonna try to make that a habit. But I feel like, guys, I'm so disorganized. I'm putting the cart before the horse. Okay, let's get to this. Now, this is something else I'm really excited about is this whole monthly plan. As I mentioned before, I'm not keen on this body check-in area. I, I think that if you are using this to either bulk up or slim down, this could be handy. But for me, I just have no intention. This is something I've never tracked. So I'm just gonna be ignoring that. I do like notes here. Uh, I, don't, I don't know what I put there, but I'm sure there'll be things like, don't forget you need to schedule a this in this month, something like that. So I think that's pretty cool. So here we can see, uh, I love this already. So the first, I already know, I'm working at night at 6 p.m. 
So I'm going to be working then and until 6 a.m. the next morning. I want to put my whole work schedule in here, so I'm going to be doing stuff like that. I also am leaving on a flight this morning, um, and I'm going to be going to visit family and going to my cousin's wedding, so I'm looking forward to that. So yeah, uh, and then this will be on Sunday is my flight home. So that's exciting, and I'm just gonna I'm gonna do this off camera, but I'll be filling in my whole work schedule here, and I think that's cool. So from here, let's talk about how they break it down by week. Oh, and by the way, I don't know if you guys noticed, like each month has this incredible artwork. Look at that. Each month is a different, like it's just cool. I like how body positive this is. It's like yeah, people with tattoos are cool. The tattoos have tattoos, and I think that's cool. Oh, I love the cacti. I just, there's so much of this that's so Hermione Granger looking girl. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. And November is this incredibly body positive imagery. These women have like, I think those are supposed to be stretch marks. I love it. Different body sizes. I love it. And then we've got December. Those are so beautiful. At the end of each month, it has the same thing it had for the end of 2021. It has January in review, the February goal, so that every day when you turn to February, you turn to this and you track your habits here. You are reminded what your January was like and what your February goals are right there where you're tracking your daily habits. And then you have all the monthly stuff. Week by week, it breaks down pretty handily. Um, I wasn't sure how they would handle this because the first week doesn't start on like a regular week, but it doesn't, it just sort of keeps going. And then next to every Monday, there's a grocery list. Um, this is another, this food tracker here is another aspect of it that is a little bit like weight lossy, um, health focused. But um, by the end of the year, I do want to get into using a food tracker because I have problems with a lot of different foods. I've mentioned before on the channel, I get bloated a lot and I would love to not <laughs> be bloated because it's incredibly uncomfortable. But uh, I think that tracking my food would be better. Also, I think that I have a lot of goals for my food, for my diet, like I would like to eat less meat. And I'm always like, oh yeah, I'm eating less meat. But I bet you if I actually sat down and tracked how much meat I'm eating, it's it's not less. I'm just thinking about eating less meat. So I feel like I've done that when I really haven't. And I've heard in psychology before that that's a thing. More vegetables in general and less meat for the environment. And also, I think my ultimate goal someday would be to not eat meat at all. But um, every time I've tried that, it's it's been one of those unsustainable practices for me that as soon as, you know, after a few weeks, I just, I just can't go on because I've started eating nothing but McDonald's french fries because I don't have like handy, ready to go meals that I know how to make that are meat free. So that's something I'm working on. And I think towards the end of the year, that might be one of like become one of my monthly goals is um, tracking the food. But for right now, that's like a lot of changes for me. And I'm not trying to push myself. I've got, you know, a long time. I don't want to be this person who thinks that January 1st marks a new, a new Lexi, a new year. I think um, the main reason why I'm starting this stuff on January is because the planner starts on January. If the planner had started like October 27th or whatever day it was that I ordered this stuff, then I would have started a lot of these goals October 27th. But I really like the tool of having these habit trackers and just the daily, um, the daily list. And these are going to be my to-do list. Um, I have dabbled before in block scheduling and I found that really good for someone like me who tends to get distracted and kind of overwhelmed when I have a lot of different tasks to do. So this is going to be really great for me to see like Monday afternoon is the day I have set aside to film. Oh, hello. I've got a cat coming on the table. Pablo, get down. So for instance, I could say the afternoon of Monday the 3rd is when I'm going to film a YouTube video and then on the 4th, I'm going to film the B-roll. And then on the 5th, I'm going to edit it. And having it laid out clearly like that, I think will help me organizationally. So I'm hoping, um, not over scheduling myself, not like nailing it down by minutes, but just by labeling it out. So it's somewhere besides just floating around in my head, I think will really help me uh, kind of keep goals better. Okay, this video has been going on a long time. Um, we've I was I was so excited to start that I didn't realize how much there was to film. 
Okay guys, here's the part where I jump you back in time and we pick back up in the very beginning where I just started filling it out without realizing uh, what I needed to do to make this video work. Sorry, <laughs> it's so confusing. So the first thing it says, I hope that you guys can read this. It's kind of a light gray, it's not super dark, but the first thing it says is three people who inspire me. And right away the first one I know is my mom. Uh, she is amazing. This woman is tireless and she works so hard for others. She takes care of so many people in her community and I find that really inspiring. The second person is my grandma and that would be my grandma LaDonna. No, you guys, I did not just make LaDonna up as like some cool name that is my grandmother's name and that is my middle name, so I'm named after her. She was a fiery woman and everybody knew LaDonna, everybody, and she was, a force to be reckoned with, so uh, she very much inspires me. The third person who inspires me is my Nana, who is my other grandma, and that would be my dad's mom, Carol. Carol was amazing in her own right as well. She is the one who inspired me to be in the military. She herself was a naval officer during World War II. She was a cryptology officer, and she met my grandpa in the Navy, but she stayed in the Navy after the war until 1948. All three of these are women who are strong and independent, but who have done so many things in their lives when others told them they couldn't do it. So I think I've talked enough about uh, the women who inspire me, but let's not talk about the things that inspire me. The first thing that inspires me are the craft and art projects of my friends. Sometimes I get caught up in the idea that all my projects have to be perfect, have to be so amazing. And then I see the, the craft projects of my friends and that's kind of coming out bad. I don't mean to say that their projects aren't amazing, but I see that they put so much time and love and effort into them. And I can really tell that the making of it brought them joy, but also then the giving of it brings them joy. And it doesn't have to be some spectacular thing. I think I get really caught up with like how amazing everything is on Pinterest, but I just really love some of my friends' art. For instance, one friend of mine recently screen printed a sweatshirt to wear to my Christmas party and that was really cool and I could tell it was fun for her to make, it was fun for her to see, it meant a lot to me that she got into the spirit of the party. Another friend of, of mine made me a Christmas ornament and I think that's really cool too. It's not fancy, it's a cactus and it's adorable and I love it. I love seeing it on my tree, it makes me smile every time I see it and I know that she had fun making it and I you know, loved receiving it as a gift. I have a friend that does a, a lot of other artwork. She's a tattoo artist, but she also does painting. And it's a little bit dusty, but she made this uh, painting little tray of my, of my cat, Pete, and it's adorable. And seeing things like this really inspire me. She also did this tattoo on my arm and she's just talented in many ways. But that's the next thing is that, the other thing that inspires me is friends music. And that same tattoo artist is also in a band. My husband's in a band, and every time I see them on stage, every time I know that they're going to rehearse, it inspires me because once again, they're doing something they love for the joy of creating it. I myself am a singer. I haven't talked about that a lot in this channel, but I sing classical music. I'm not a soloist, and sometimes it can feel really like not enough. I'm not like a soloist. I'm not like amazing. I just sing in this choir, but it means a lot to me, and this, Seeing my friends' music and seeing them pour their heart and soul into it remind, inspires me that it doesn't matter how big or small the project is, it's the love and passion you put into it. And I think the third thing that inspires me is small YouTubers. I've watched some channels grow from less than a thousand to now five or six thousand, and I think that's really amazing. After years of hard work and consistent posting, it's really cool to see people grow their channels and evolve their channels and continuing to put in effort and care even when the YouTube algorithm doesn't necessarily pay that back. So I like seeing that a lot. Now we've reached the part in the video where I realized I put the cart before the horse and jumped into filling it out before I've even showed you the whole calendar. So I'm going to skip you now to the end of the video when I went back and filled it all in. And also a little bit more quickly because I realized that the video would be two hours if I went into that much detail about every single block. I guess to be a little bit more succinct than I was before, I feel most inspired when, um, I would say in, to generalize all these people and things that inspire me, 
I see the hard work and creativity of others. I feel most fulfilled when, I would have to say when I work hard on something and complete it. The things I want to, so let's move on to aspirations. I think the three things that, well, I don't know if I have two, three things, but right now I'm gonna put two things. Things that I want to achieve by the end of the year is uh, better self-care, and that's like basic thing things guys I'm talking like taking my vitamins getting enough sleep um like washing my face regularly I have all these things I want to do and it's really hard for me to get into a routine because I work rotating shift work so I go back and forth between night shifts and day shifts and my self-care regime routine whatever you want to call it is in shambles and I want to use this planner to help me build those habits slowly one at a time start with drinking enough water you know, then adding and maybe getting enough sleep, then add maybe getting enough fiber, then add taking my vitamins, things like that. And then not put too much pressure on myself to turn into a new person overnight, but just slowly building up these habits. Heck, even taking my allergy medicine every day would be improvement. Uh, so that would be better self-care. And the second one is to improve my YouTube videos. There are so many things that I want to do better. By improving my skills, I could get better at being able to film in different circumstances. By improving my time management, I could get better at working in those times to film. And by better organization and learning how to like storyboard and things like that, I think that I can just make better quality content. And that's what I want to do. I just, I like making these videos. I have so many fun ideas and I want to be able to make them. Those are my two goals for right now. A third one that is like always my goal is to be a better friend, be a better listener, but that's just kind of something really internal. There's not like concrete actions I can take to just get my head out of my ass. So <laughs> that one, I guess, is just, um, that one's just a lifelong goal. My plan of action is going to be building small habits via the habit tracker and via um, my scheduling and my to-do lists to remind myself to do my daily tasks. But also uh, my plan of action is to edu educate myself. And that is somewhat with the self-care, learning more about different ways of sleep and different things that could help me sleep and vitamins and all that. But I think that especially pertains to um, filming and making YouTube videos and editing and all that. My expected challenges are going to be time management, uh, stress and complacency. So here we have another manifestation space and I'm just going to leave that alone for now. And, um, now we're getting into mental health goals and self love goals. So, and I think that like talking about these types of things like mental health struggles, self love struggles is really important that we normalize talking about these things. So I've decided to put myself out on a limb and fill this out and tell you guys what I put for all of these mental health goals. I think my three biggest mental health challenges um, and my goals then are learning not to self berate. I think we all fall into this trap like, oh, I'm not good enough, but I'm going to learn how to turn that language off. I, I really want to learn how to turn that language off and look at um, what I can do and what I have done positively and be easy on myself when I don't do well on something. Understand, accommodate for my focus problems. I have a lot of problems focusing. I either get way too focused on something or I can't focus on things enough. So my goal is to really just um, accommodate for that and understand that that's how I am. And so to build those sort of things and, and like understanding of that into my process. Like I finally learned after all these years, like if I can't find something, if I've set something down and forget about it, the best thing I can do is just start cleaning and within 10 minutes I'll find it. So things like that and just understand that I am the way I am. I can't make myself have better focus, but I can understand and uh, accommodate for those issues. And then the third is, I would say wait until my emotion subsides before talking to people because I have a habit of getting upset if I'm upset or if I'm sad. And then I talk to people and really I should wait. I should let those feelings subside, calm down. So a more rational side of Lexi comes to the forefront um, and before before talking to people not that those feelings that I'm feeling aren't valid just the strength of those feelings can really um, lead me down paths where the more rational side of me says like maybe we don't need to go here so three things that are holding me back I think is holding myself to under other people's standards and comparing myself to others they say 
is it they say uh, comparison is the death of happiness there's always going to be someone out there who does it perfectly you know but maybe they focus so much on that one thing in their life that they're not doing you know maybe they don't have a full-time job or maybe maybe they do but they don't have any other hobbies except making these crafts and you know you can't hold yourself to that standard everybody's lives are different this next one is feeling obligated to too many people and that is that sometimes I really want to see all my friends and I really care about all my friends and I worry that if I don't see all of them like at least every couple weeks they'll think I don't care and the fact of the matter is is that I just don't have enough time I don't have enough time and um, keeping my social calendar too full means that I'm sacrificing other things that make me happy and I'm sacrificing my rest and that's something that I can't I'm too old I'm too old to keep shorting myself on sleep and the third thing is focusing on negative things. This kind of goes back to learning to self berate I think about the things I messed up. I think about the things I do wrong and not about all the wonderful things that I do and about how, how much just like trying is important. So actions I think I need to take to move forward. These are really broad. I don't know. I need to organize and that's kind of what this planner is. Um, I need to educate and that's one of my overarching goals is to just look, learn how to do my YouTube stuff better. I need to plan. That's kind of with organizing and kind of, I don't know. I've they are kind of like related so I kind of copped out and got a two for one there and then um, encourage myself that goes back to learning not to self braid you know just um, and accepting myself for who I am and what I can reasonably achieve and then that's okay you know healthy healthy coping mechanisms so you can see here going for a walk I used to walk all the time and there's so many studies that prove um, that going for a walk is like really good for your mental health it's good for your creativity and I used to do that all the time I used to walk everywhere when I lived downtown and I, I just don't anymore uh, you know I come home from work every day and I'm like oh what TV shows am I gonna watch when really I should I should like you know go for a walk for a half hour that would be really healthy but I want to um, do that when I'm feeling anxious. I think doing art and doing makeup, I put those are the one and the same because when I do my makeup, I feel it's really like calming to my anxiety and I have a lot of fun doing it and it is art. As long as I'm focusing on more of like the artistic side of doing makeup, I feel that's good. I, you know, doing art, like I've got a paint by number I'm working on. That is really fun and relaxing for me. And then the third is practicing my music, which let's face it, you guys, I should do more because the choir has standards and I need to live up to them. But it also just calms me down and makes me feel happy. Singing is one of my few, not one of my few, one of my biggest joys in life. Although I do have a lot of joys in life. Uh, three things I love about myself, how much I try to help others. I, you know, I'm not one of the, I'm not Mother Teresa. I don't have all the time in the world, but I try to do what I can for the people in my life. Um, and in 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 whatever way I can and I'm not perfect about this but I I love about myself that I I try uh, the second is how much I love to host parties and I do that a lot and I find it really fun to host theme parties and dinner parties and small get-togethers and and it's not just the the party part of it I really like hosting people as a way to show them I care so I like that about myself oh, I guess I forgot to write this third one down I really love how excited I get about projects. Okay, three things I love about myself. My husband and our relationship. He's a wonderful man. I love him so much. And I think that we have a really good relationship because we're not afraid to talk about stuff. Uh, number two is my friends. I also love them to bits and I am so inspired by them. They're so wonderful and beautiful and amazing and they inspire me all the time. And then the third thing I love is actually my work-life balance. It's going to sound, I'm always busy, but it's mostly because I have a ton of side projects. My job is really crazy. I don't love necessarily my rotating shifts, but I work 40 hours a week on average. I work 200 hours every five weeks, and those are 12-hour shifts. So that means on average I work fewer days than people who work eight-hour shifts, and I love that for me. I love having full days off because work tires me out. So even when I work an eight-hour day, it's not like I get anything more done in the evening than when I work a 12-hour day. So I'd rather work fewer days, and I love that about my life. I really hate this idea in our society that we're always supposed to be trying to climb the corporate ladder. I love my job. I take pride in how good of a job I do at my work, and that's enough for me. Two things I have done that I am proud of. I made my re-audition in December for my choir. They had all of us re-audition, and I made it, and 
I was so happy. I, I couldn't believe it. I worked hard on the re-audition piece and I did it and that made me very happy. And then this past year I restarted my YouTube channel after a few years off. So I knew starting into it that it was going to be like a long-term thing. It wasn't just like, I'll make a video now and then I'll make one next month. Um, but I did it. I took the plunge and I did it and I'm really happy I did. One bad habit I want to break is staying up too late. It's not even like I can say I'm doing anything valid. I'm literally just playing games on my phone, guys. Even reading a book would be more valid than playing a game on my phone, but ugh. And then um, a good habit I want to form. I mean, I don't know. There's this whole thing about habits. A lot of good habits I want to form, but I think that the most important one is taking my vitamins and medicine daily. Of all the habits, that's like the most important one. So let's talk about my vision board. I didn't really know how to feel. I don't know how to fill all this out, but I think for my health, I think the first goal is taking all my vitamins and medicine and drinking enough water daily. Six months out, I want to be consistently eating healthier with more vegetables and more fiber. And then 12 months out, I want good quality sleep. I actually think that I need to do all these other things first before I can just like snap into getting good quality sleep. But, you know, that's a long term goal. Career wise, I've just decided to talk about the YouTube stuff because I don't really have any career goals for my main full time job. Just like continue doing a good job. That's it. So. I don't know. Um, but learn to light and use um, better and use my camera better. Learn to be able to schedule better. And this is why I put this for a six month goal. I think it's going to take me a long time trying a lot of different things to figure out what I need to do to, to really get consistent videos out that I like the quality that use a lot of different like B-roll, C-roll, whatever. And then by the end of the year, I want to be stopping using iMovie and I want to instead be using um, a more advanced editing software. Uh, those softwares tend to be a lot, like it, it's a lot of time learning to not only use the programs, but then learn how to edit them when there's like a lot more choices and it's not just like auto done for you by iMovie. But I think the end result would be a lot better. I don't know, relationship goals. I think I don't have like specific goals. I think just like continuing to communicate and try to be like a good partner and a good friend. Finances. Um, I think realistically six months is to pay off our debt, we got into a little debt for the wedding, was not planning on it, but right at the end, right before the wedding, all the costs ballooned as I should have predicted but failed to do so. So we want to pay off that debt. I'm hoping earlier than six months, but six months at the maximum, and then rebuild the emergency fund that we, we tapped into our emergency fund, which I usually wouldn't, I, I told myself I'd never do, but I thought that it'd be better to use the emergency fund rather than to get into more debt. So uh, by the end of the year, then rebuild that emergency fund and just be in a better financial situation by the end of the year. And so the last uh, page is one I already filled out, but I actually changed. I realized that this habit number one, like consistent sleep, that's like a long-term goal that has many factors that lead into it. But my first goal is to go to bed by nine. And I don't mean getting into bed by nine. I mean stopping what I'm doing, turning off the computer, turning off the TV by 9 p.m. After that, I still have a lot of things I need to do. But my goal for this month is to just stop my main evening activity at 9 p.m. Turn off the TV at 9 p.m. And then this other stuff, um, let's talk about that. Something that made me proud. Uh, I threw an amazing wedding. It was gorgeous, it was beautiful. I saw all my friends and family. I had a great, fantastic time. Things did not go well. If you were watching this and you were at the wedding, I'm sorry for the seating. They just completely seated everywhere not in accordance with my seating chart that I took a really long time. So I guarantee you, you weren't supposed to sit where you were sitting. You were probably supposed to sit somewhere different and I'm sorry, but the wedding was amazing and I loved it. Something I can work on is better behavior towards spouse when stressed. This kind of goes back to the waiting until emotion subsides, subsides before talking to people. I really want to um, just learn how to talk more with my reason and less with my emotions. And a lesson I learned this year is don't overschedule yourself. I learned that on our honeymoon, I overscheduled it and we had no time to just relax and enjoy ourselves. I've also done this a lot in the past. There's got to be a middle ground between overscheduling and not scheduling at all. So I'm hoping to hit in that sweet spot. And then something that I'm grateful for every day is my husband's love. And I'm sorry I'm being so sappy, guys, but I just love him to bits. And I hope you'll forgive me <laughs> my newlywed sappiness. So that is it, you guys. I'm ready for January. I'm going to be putting my work schedule and all that in here. But uh, yeah, I'm ready for January. And I hope that you guys are too, because time and tide stop for no man and January will be here. 
before you know it. So everyone have a good new year and I will see you next year. Bye. Let's go.